Welcome BTG Moto viewers to a boat in the middle of the Rhine and today we're going to be talking about my Aprilia Touareg 660 which has reached the monumental milestone of traveling 1000 kilometers and we're on our way home from Moto Rickert where we were test riding the Moto Guzzi Stelvio and getting the first service done. The engine is... Oh. You can heap superlatives on it. First service, it actually cost, can you believe, it cost 360 euros, the first service, which is more than my BMW R1250 GS did. The reason for that is pretty simple. The big reason is there is a valve inspection on the first service. But after that, we're, we're back up to normal service intervals. So the next service is 10,000 kilometers or one year. What else did we learn in the thousand kilometers? The big thing is that only revving a Touareg to 6,000 is possible, but you don't get much airbox honk and you are kind of castrated living your life at 6,000 RPM. So I am really, really looking forward to be able to actually thrash this now. If you remember the very first Touareg that I'd rode, I gave it death and it was fantastic, honking its way up to nine and a half thousand RPM. Airbox honk. And that's hopefully what my bike's going to be able to do now. Although in this weather, hmm, maybe not so much nine and a half thousand RPM wide open throttle in this weather. But it's a long way home. Let's see what the weather brings. We're going to cross this river now and then we'll be on the road heading home. Okay, okay. Let's get the flock out of here. Here we are outside Kelberg. She's looking a bit oily at the moment because I ACF 50 her within an inch of her life. I have drenched this baby in ACF 50, which is a corrosion resistant oil. It's good stuff, gets into your wires, gets into everything aluminium and steel and helps prevent it rust. Unfortunately for the Aprilia, I only put it on after a thousand kilometers and I think the ACF 50 treatment is bolting the door after the horse has already run. I rode the bike in England recently. I rode it through salt and then I put the bike in the van for a couple of days, brought it home and washed it. And when I washed it, I've got all this nasty, oh my God, I just burnt myself real bad on this, um, which incidentally, it just rattles. And when you look on the inside of this, there's nothing there. There's no bolt. It's not like it's missing a bolt. There's no hole for a bolt. It's rubbish. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I've covered my bike in oil. And that's because the aluminium crankcases have decolored really badly, like almost immediately. Oh, it's a real shame. Um, on the same note, I have to say that I've already polished this weld here, the other side of the brake lever. Uh, that was very orange and very rusty. And I'm also getting rusty water running out of the silencer in many places. You can see these marks here. These marks here, <sighs> yeah, just two days in the back of the van with the salty water on it and it looks like shite. Lots of uh, corrosion here as well on the aluminium. I had a little rub at this already. I got the worst of it off, but yeah, man, this bike does not like wet, salty roads. My chain looks like shit, despite me oiling it several times. It's, uh, it's growing orange rusty bits. Just generally, I have to say for a bike that I bought only two months ago and I've washed it five times in a thousand kilometers, it's looking really bad. <laughs> I don't know whether that's my use case. I don't think so. My F800 GS got rode through winter. My 1250 GS got rode through winter. On the cosmetic note, by the way, users of extra big footrest stands be warned if you do lay the bike over your extra big footrest stand can dig into the swing arm which is what happened out in Spain when I 
toppled over, escaping from the angry man. That's disappointing. The rest of the bike is pretty good. To say it's been down on the left-hand side a few times already, it's standing up well. Standard hand guards are cosmetic value. Let's talk quickly about modifications. As you can see, I fitted the screen. There's a whole video about that, link below. I've also fitted some uh, double take-esque AliExpress mirrors. Now, the key difference is between the real ones and the cheap nasty ones is the quality of the fittings. And these balls are solid plastic with no rubber coating like a genuine ram mount. I thought for sure that they would just fold in as soon as I went at any speed. And uh, I thought that they would vibrate a lot more, but they actually do seem to work pretty well. They're easy to fold up. I've dropped the bike already with these fitted and they've been fine. <sighs> Uh, next modification to talk about is I fitted Oxford heated grips already. You probably noticed them before, but they are wired into the battery. I did have a very interesting moment where I flattened the battery and then uh, I left the bike in the garage with the heated grips turned on for two days. Now, on any other bike, that would mean disaster, completely dead battery. The Aprilia, it doesn't because the battery is really goddamn clever. Underneath this seat, is a lithium ferrous battery, a LIFEPO battery, lithium ferrous polymer, and it has a safety system. Can you believe it? So when the battery got to a certain voltage, it literally just turned off and disconnected itself from the rest of the bike. And that meant that my heated grips didn't kill the battery. I just charged the battery for 15 minutes and she was ready to go again. Very, very good. Very, very good. I did fit my Ibex rack, which I'm really happy with. It has started to wear through the powder coat already though um which is kind of disappointed it's just wearing through on the edges i've now coated it in acf 50. i mean i've coated everything in acf 50 as you can tell let's talk about it as we ride next on the plus side the slight oil weep that i experienced from the water pump which is a very common problem on all 660 powered aprilias and was particularly prevalent on the very first few uh, Tuaregs that were built. That seal leaked a small amount for about 100 kilometers and then fixed itself. But when I mentioned it to the dealer, lo and behold, he's took it all apart. He's put new seals in. He promises me that the new spec seals that are on all the new bikes are the ones to have. Having lived through multiple part updates, on the GS, I'm not really surprised and it's not really like a big thing. Um, some people have commented that, you know, they wouldn't expect that of a brand new bike. Maybe I'm too understanding. I don't know, what do you think? But uh, as long as the manufacturers have a fix for it, I'm kind of happy. I would be happier if it didn't come out of the factory needing a fix, obviously, but maybe I'm just too used to uh, poor service. What do you think guys? Ooh, it's seven degrees Celsius. We're at the top of the hill. The clouds are just touching the road here. Look at that view. Wow. Let's turn the old heated grips on. I am a bugger. I do just ride along in my summer gloves all year round, wherever I can. Oh, it is grey and murky today, eh? How am I getting on with the Aprilia? Well, I'd say I'm pretty happy with it. Am I missing the all-encompassing torque of the 1250 GS? Yeah, a little bit, but... It's still pretty quick, to be fair. Oof, lovely bit of mud on the road. The perils of living in the middle of all these farms. Should we do a little wheelie? <laughs> that noise, so good. Should we try a second gear wheelie? Oh, 
second gear on the power, she, she does lift. It's a bit of a hoik. It's nice being able to use the full power now. It's nice being able to use the revs. I do like the noise of the Aprilia. It's such a good bike, really. Of course, one of the best things about the Aprilia is, a, is that it can really do a bit of everything, which I really love. Thirty-ton weight limit. I don't know if the GS would have made it. Yeah, it would have just. It's a bit cold and muddy for this, and we still are on the street tyres. <laughs> These tyres are not very good in the mud, I have to say. Now, which way am I going here? Oh, this is not the route that I thought it was. The STR that's fitted to these is definitely a street tyre that looks like an off-road tyre. So we're not going to try any super bad mud with this. When I first got the bike it was on very road bias suspension settings and while I was in Spain I did take the time to adjust it and basically I just relaxed the compression damping quite a lot, about 50% and I relaxed the rebound damping and I put the rear preload up a bit and uh, made the bike a lot more softer and squashy and now it can really hit like hard bumps really hard and on the road it's a little bit divey it's got that supermoto kind of feel but with the big stupid 21 inch front tyre and in case nobody's told you a 21 inch front it can handle well the Ducati Desert X can proves that like the Aprilia you can make a 21 inch front handle pretty well but if you're looking for like a knee down, peg down, full security kind of like, I feel like this bike is as comfortable laid on its peg with its knee down as it is in a straight line. You're never going to get that with a 21 inch front wheel. You've got a lot of deflection. You've got a lot of gyrosco gyroscopic force. <laughs> you've got a lot of gyroscopic force. I don't even know what gyroscopic is, but you know what I'm saying. 21 inch front wheel you're never going to make this into a sports bike but it is pretty sporty how's the mud looking oh it's looking like deep mud i just don't really want to wash the bike that much you know <laughs> uh, lots of people ask me am i missing the 1250 gs yet and the honest answer is no not really this bike still pleases my inner child. Uh, I can ride it like a bit of a dick when I want to. It does wheelies, I can do stoppies, it's a cool bike. It goes like stink. It really is surprising, it's only 80 horsepower. It feels faster, you know? The engine has this frantic energy to it, this excitement that makes me think of like, like race bikes basically, but here it is in a trail bike. I mean, pff, how weird is that? I really love it. I really love it. Of course, I've not ridden it on a proper like 4,000 kilometer kind of tour yet. So I guess that's coming soon. I might do Corsica on it. I might take it to Corsica. I don't know how much space I'm going to have in the van. I might have to take a smaller bike to Corsica, something that's not got massive bars. But don't worry, because if it's not going to do the Corsica trip, which is actually low mileage, it will be doing my big BTG Moto Balkans tour. And that's a 4,000 kilometer odyssey. So I can't wait for that. The, the Touareg should be really good at that. I don't actually have any complaints about the seat yet, but I haven't ridden the seat more than two or three hours in a stretch. So maybe that will change when I do a full day's riding. Side note, it feels to me like the magazines and the other YouTube channels, they've started to cotton on that the Touareg really is a bit of a unicorn in this segment. And yeah, there's a lot of bikes in this segment now and there's some really good ones. And I'm sure BMW, the F900 GS is also going to be a great bike. But Aprilia, they didn't have a bike bigger than this. They don't have to worry, at the moment, they don't have to worry about a Kappa Nord V4 or anything like that. And they just built the Touareg 660 to the best it could be. And now I think in this segment, this bike, dominates to be honest in, in my opinion the only question mark is over the reliability and so far it's so it's good 
It's good, I'll just go out and say it. I hope I'm not cursing myself. Yes, I had a little oil leak. Yes, the dealer knew about it before I even had it. And yes, the dealer had the parts on the shelf and fitted them straight away. But this is kind of like normal stuff in the world of BMWs. The dealers get the updates and then they decide whether they're going to give them to you or not. Ask anybody with a 12, 1250 GS. Anybody with a 1250 GS from 2019 to 2020 who has the really, really loud left cylinder. Because in 2021, the GS got an updated cam chain tensioner. But nobody knows that. The dealers know that. Customers know it if they frequent the forums and the groups. But nobody will tell you that. But your bike actually has like a really noisy cam chain tensioner and you can fix it with an updated part. This is, this is normal stuff now in motorcycles. That kind of sucks really, doesn't it? We kind of try to take this treatment as a, as a normal thing. Anyway, so far, so good. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's about it. I'll keep this video short and sweet. If you really enjoy the videos, leave me one of those big old thumbs up, would you? Give us a subscribe and yeah, comment down below. Let me know how you're finding your Touareg and I'll catch you later.